Miss Betsy, uh, Mrs. Betsy Hernandez is coming from the Department of Finance. Uh, hi, Betsy, and welcome. Thank you, Nikos, for having me. Uh, Betsy, uh, tell us what is your job? What do you do at the Department of Finance? So I'm with the SCRI and DRI unit, which is also known as the Rent Freeze Program at the Department of Finance, and our office is located at 66 John Street. If anyone's interested in visiting, uh, they can always come to the walk-in center if they have questions about screen injury. That's good. Betsy, tell us a little bit about the program, the Senior Citizen Rent Increase Excel program, and the New York City Rent Freeze Program, which again, it's the same. But so the Rent Freeze Program is a program issued by the City of New York. It helps seniors 62 or older or disabled individuals 18 or older stay in their affordable housing by freezing their rent. The Which program, that calls, right. that is called, I believe, DRI, right? Right. So for disabled individuals, it's called DRI, and for senior citizens, it's called SCRI. And um, how does one qualify for SCRI? So for SCRI, you have to be a senior, so 62 years of age or older. Your total household income has to be $50,000 or less, mm -hmm. with your rent being at least one-third of that income. And most importantly, you must be named on the lease or the rental agreement for a rent control or rent-stabilized apartment. That's good. And now, when you say $50,000, uh, I believe we discussed this a little earlier yes. in my office. Um, someone might be receiving, might have... Uh, a little less than $50,000, say $36,000 a year. Right. But again, they don't qualify uh, to be benefited from SCRI. How do you explain that? It's the one-third rule, I believe. So the total household income has to be $50,000 or less, but the rent must be one-third of the income. So that's called the one-third rule. So even if a senior is earning less than 50000 if their rent is not at least one-third of their income, then unfortunately they wouldn't be qualified for the program. Yes. With a few words, if someone earns $36,000 uh, income a year, and it's the one-third of their monthly income is $1,000, okay? Okay. Uh, if their rent is $900, then they wouldn't be eligible. They wouldn't be eligible. Correct. Uh, that's the one third uh, ruling. Right. Count, which that's excellent. And uh, now tell us a little bit about DRI, which is for the disabled people. Right. So DRI is very similar to SCRI, but it is for disabled individuals. So the age limit is 18 years of age or older. Also, you must be named on the lease or the rental agreement for a rent control or rent stabilized apartment. And the total household income does have to be $50,000 or less. Again. Again, with your rent being at least one-third of that income. But you must provide proof that you receive a type of disability income. So this would be, for instance, Social Security disability, um, veterans benefits, some type of disabled veterans benefits. Yes. Um, also, SSI, the I SSI would, um, and New York State Postal Disability Insurance would also Okay, come. which that's good. That will prove that someone in your family, in the family that is applying for DRI, is, is disabled. disabled. Correct. And uh, now, in this case, the disabled person has to be the primary uh, person on the on list? On the lease. They have to be named on the lease. On the lease. Right. As long as they're it, named on the lease. It doesn't so matter say... that, for example, if someone is 35 years old and is living with their parent, his parents, and his parents... Uh, are on the list plus him, they can apply uh, for for uh, for the. And so that's a great point to bring up. Um, if there's a senior and also a disabled individual, you can't receive both benefits. Only one can apply for the benefits. So he, okay. the disabled individual can apply for DRI, or the senior parent could apply exactly for SCRI. if they are both. Yeah, either for SCRI or DRI. Right. And again, here the household income has to be less than fifty thousand dollars. Right. And of course, the rule of the one third, Correct. which it, it includes all the household income. Yes. Yes. And which apartments are not eligible? So that's a good question. So unfortunately, this program is only for rent control and rent stabilized apartments. So anyone living in public housing, like NYCHA buildings, wouldn't be eligible. Also, anyone receiving a Section 8 voucher that pays for their rent wouldn't be eligible. And also, rentals in private homes, or private buildings would not be eligible. Okay. For the program. Now, tell us the buildings that they would be eligible. 
For so, example, if someone lives uh, in, in a, a building, in a control building, um, in a rent stabilized building, or also a hotel that has rent regulated uh, apartments in apartments. it, they would also be able to apply. And uh, what are the income eligibility requirements? Um, so it's fifty thousand dollars or less total household income, you have to show prior year's income. So let's say you apply in 2018, you'd be showing 2017 total household income for all members. Mm -hmm. Also, if you have a border, you wouldn't include that border's income. So if someone's renting a room from you, you wouldn't have to provide their income, but rather you would have the, to disclose how much they pay the you The money they rent pay monthly. you, right. that would be part of your income Correct. then. Correct, that would be counted and, as your um, income. Now in this case, how do we prove um, the income, which is, uh, I believe, you require some documents in order to prove the income, right? Right. Or for people who don't file for taxes, for exactly. example, a lot of our right. seniors don't file for taxes and they always address this question to us. Right. So a lot of seniors don't file a tax return. What we ask if you don't file a tax return is that you submit any income for the prior year. So this would be your 1099 for Social Security, a pension statement. If you have an IRA or annuity statement um, that comes annually, you'd send that to us. W-2s if you worked um, for some portion of the year but still didn't make enough to file taxes. So any income that you've earned in the prior calendar year, as well as if you have any friends or family that are helping you with financial assistance, a letter stating how much they provide each month, exactly. and that would be counted mm -hmm. towards your income. And because most of the senior citizens who apply, of course, for SCRI, uh, they only receive Social Security, right. that's an award letter, or the 1099, 1099 that, right. that they receive from SSA, right. and uh, uh, the workers' compensation, if some of them, pension, that's included in the income. And again, any money they may receive from friends or family, just a written statement saying, yes. my child helps me with X amount of dollars. Yes, that would which, be you know, income. that's income too. Right. And for that, I believe they'll have to get a letter uh, statement from the person that helps And them. just have it signed. Of course. How does uh, the Department of Finance determine uh, how much would be the frozen rent? That's a good question. So frozen rent is determined first by figuring out your total income and then determining what one third of that income is. And then we compare that income to your prior legal rent on your prior lease and they freeze your rent at either one third of your income or your prior legal rent, whichever is greater. Okay. We get a lot of questions from our clients and they ask if they can this program, if it decreases the rent that they pay. Right. Uh, in this case, what do we tell them? Right. So unfortunately, it's not a rent assistance program. It's called the rent freeze program. So what we do is freeze your rent at the prior legal rent amount, and then we cover any future increases. So it doesn't actually reduce your rent, but it does prevent you from having to pay any future increases. Only if uh, they file for a redetermination, I believe, Say if it's a couple that they make $2,000 between both of them right. and one passes away, then there is, I believe, the form of the screen determination. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. So once a person is accepted into the program, let's say like in your example, they're a married couple. If one person passes away and they can prove that their monthly income is reduced by 20% or more, then we may be... At able to reduce the amount of frozen rent they paid based on, again, that 20% income decrease. Exactly. Those are, that's the only case where we would actually uh, allow it. for a decrease mm -hmm. in the decrease. frozen rent amount. And in this case, right. you know, they have to apply. And it's they have a special to be in form. the program already when and they apply. They for have to be in the program. Right. Um, now, um, many clients again ask, like Sophia, if they have to ask their landlord Mm -hmm. in order to apply for SCRI. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about this. They do not have to get permission from the landlord to apply for SCRI. The um, approval is based on whether or not they meet the eligible, you know, the income eligibility requirements. So it's based on their application and their documents and not on permission from the landlord. And can the landlord refuse to participate in the New York City no. Rent Freeze Program? No. So the landlord can't refuse it. If the tenant is eligible for the program, then it's his legal right to receive the benefit. Exactly. And sometimes what we see, uh, the landlord uh, delays for one or, or another reason to give the renewal lease to the tenant uh, that, uh, you know, they have to uh, renew their uh, right. screen. 
And I believe that is one of the requirements in order to renew your right. certificate. So uh, some landlords do try to be a little difficult and not provide renewal leases. Um, once the tenant is in the program, we actually have a special application for applicants to fill out and complete. That's if your landlord is refusing to give you your renewal lease on time. What happens in those cases? We renew you um, at the current amount you're paying. And so the landlord wouldn't receive that tax uh, credit increase until he does provide a copy of the renewal lease. Okay. With a few words, is the responsibility for the landlord to provide uh, the lease to the tenant if it's a stabilized apartment, of course. Uh, they have to provide the lease to the tenant who is on screen. It's their legal uh, right. For so this, this is right. something good for the landlords to hear, to know their responsibilities. Right. Uh, this is inform right. information that we give to both to the landlords and to, and then, to the right. tenants. So not providing a lease is not going to stop them from renewing their screen. Exactly, right. exactly. Uh, besides, the landlord in this case, like we said many times before, uh, when we spoke about screen, um, has nothing to lose, actually, right. because they get the increases they're supposed to get through a tax abatement. With right. a few words, if you have to pay so much taxes at the end of the year, right. The money that you are going to get from the tenant you as an increase, tax you will receive the tax credit. Right. So the landlords which, don't that's lose. excellent. And um, if another uh, household member already has SCRI and RE, can another uh, member of the house apply for SCRI? No. And so like in Nico's instance where there was a senior the parent and, and the a child, child that's disabled, only one can apply for the benefit. We can't provide a benefit to both, even though they even both may they be eligible. Even if they are subletting um, or if they're renting a room into that household, for example. Correct. That's excellent. Just, uh, Betsy, tell us a little bit about the renewal process. So the renewal process is very simple. Once the applicant is in the program, uh, the system generates a renewal application with all of their pre-printed information. It comes out to them in the mail 60 days before their lease is up. So they'll get that renewal application, review their income information. Um, they'll send their prior year's income. So if it's a one or two year lease, depending on the, the lease type, that prior year's income information, sign it, make sure everything is correct on the application, sign it, and send it with a copy of the new so lease. So they will have time to prepare. Yes, we give um, them 60 days. And, right. and also, I, I, I wanted you to also emphasize that when the time comes for someone to renew their SCRI mm -hmm. case, they will receive a renewal In application from SCRI. Yes. Uh, because uh, many of uh, our clients and tenants where we work in the same building, they come down and they tell us, uh, my, my lease will expire in a few months and I want to file for the SCRI renewal. Okay, that is something that we, of course, advise them that they have to wait to get the renewal application, which, right. as you said, everything is printed on the application, right. their mm -hmm. name, and so we do suggest that they wait for the pre-printed application. We understand the seniors get nervous. Um, but what we like to tell them is that after their lease has ended, they actually have a six-month grace, grace period, period to renew. Yes. And so they don't have to rush into renewing. Wait for the pre-printed application to arrive. And then you do have six, a six-month grace period after that. And in case that we see that all the time, that, for example, uh, they don't have all the documents uh, to submit with the application. Right. If they submit the application and a document is missing, for example, in this case, the, the lease, right. uh, they will receive a first pending notice, I believe, right. uh, which you know will show that please send us the lease or uh, the income, right. that the award letter or whatever. And we'll actually send out three pending notices. So we'll give them three chances. We'll send a notice and say that documents were missing. I believe if they don't receive those documents within 30 days, they'll send another notice and then a third and final notice. And that one will say final notice. Um, and then they'll have to provide the documents or unfortunately they'll receive a letter stating that they've been revoked. Okay. Uh, that's why there is the six months grace period. Right which in this case, you know, it gives you plenty of time, which right. I always recommend, suggest to my clients, if you have the documents or when you receive your renewal application, right. just send it even if you are waiting for uh, the lease from your landlord, send it and you will receive the first pending notice. Sure. During That's that time, you get ready, prepare, get the 
the, the diagnosis, we see that all the time, Sophia, all the time, right? Yes, right. Yes. So I mean, it's always great to receive a complete application, but so if this you way you don't go back and forth. It in, yes. Then that's okay as and well. And could you mention um, all the required documents that need to be uh, submitted with the renewal form? Sure. With um, actually, I'll say with an initial, we do need the prior year's income, some photo ID, a copy of the current lease and prior lease. With renewal, it's much easier. You're already in the system, yes. so all we need is the prior year's income and that new lease. The new lease, which that's excellent. Uh, so Betsy spoke to us about a wonderful program that the city of New York uh, provides to the tenants, the low income, in this case, $50,000 and less, uh, to senior citizens who are over 62 years old, is the SCRI program, and to disabled people who uh, are under 65 years old, over 80 years old. Uh, thank you for coming. We thank appreciate you very much for the, coming. The thank the you so much for having me. Thank, thank you. you, Betsy. Thank you.